So here we have an iPad 7 that has error 9 when you try to restore it. This came in for boot looping and when you have a boot looping device and you've ruled out a parts issue, the next step is always to flash an update. And as you can see here, we have error 9 on 3U tools. On the left, you click iTunes Flash, you select the iOS version you want, you click uh, left is updates, and then on the right is restore. This erases your data, this does not, but in both cases, we get error 9 like you saw. So we're gonna go through the process of replacing the NAND, because error 9 is basically requires a NAND replacement. Uh, surprisingly, this iPad 7 does not have a CPU issue, so we should be able to fix it. And if you need this repair, make sure you reach out to me at my website, which I will link down below. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so right now I'm actually using Easy Flash to restore it. This is where we're trying to wipe it. And you can see right now it is at 20%. And essentially, if you get to 20% and it fails at 20%, you can see here it says updating NAND. It's gonna fail any second now, and that means basically NAND itself is bad. Um, if it fails at 19% or 18%, it could be something else, it could be NAND, but it's a little more, it can vary. But in, in this case, you're gonna see here in any second, it's gonna fail. You see the device has the Apple logo and the loading bar. So these are all clues that NAND is gonna be the issue because there it goes, the screen went black, the device disconnected, and it's still basically stuck on the screen. The iPad reconnected, you can see here on the left is in recovery mode, um, and it's still stuck. So basically if I let this sit for about 10, 15 minutes, it'll eventually fail. But the iPad is no longer uh, trying to flash, it's, it's, it's basically restarted. So 100% chance is NAND, I hope. <laughs> So let's go through the process of replacing the NAND. All right, so one trick I do wanna show you guys, uh, I've never showed it, I don't think, on any video, so let me just show you here. Essentially, anytime you're disassembling an iPad, you know, you have the digitizer, which you don't wanna get any dust or dirt on, and then you have the LCD, which you also don't wanna get any dust or dirt on. Although well, this one came in dirty. But basically, as soon as you separate these, face the LCD down as if it's the same as when it's inside the iPad, and now you essentially have sealed the screen. So the LCD and the underside of the digitizer are both kind of together. And no matter what, if you have this sitting on the shelf for one year, the LCD and the digitizer are not gonna get dirty inside. So this is what I do to store iPads. Essentially, I, I store them like this. In this case, we need to get in here, so let's get this out of the way. Here's the motherboard itself, and we gotta get inside. And these are a little tricky. You wanna catch the corner of the shield and remove it. And this is the NAND right here. This is a CPU, which fails a lot. Although the theory of the CPU failure on iPad 7s is because uh, people are playing games on them, which are very CPU intensive, and it's overheating them and causing issues. As you can see, there's no heat sink, there's no like, thermal pad that connects to this that helps dissipate the heat. It's essentially just a CPU by itself. And, you know, maybe adding some thermal paste to it can, can make contact with this and then help solve that. But uh, as long as you're not playing games, you should be fine. Pretty much all the ones I get uh, that end up having CPU issues with 4013 end up being like kids' iPads. And of course, kids have a bunch of games on there and they is play all these, uh, you know, high CPU intensive or GPU intensive stuff. So what I like to do is add some alcohol and then use a flat blade like this to help essentially loosen up the, the board. And always go to the side of the battery connector. Don't go directly on under the connector because that's where you can get in trouble. And essentially the goal is to separate it just enough so that the board and the battery disconnect. And that's good enough. I'm actually gonna do this in the frame and there's no issues with this. I've done plenty, never had a battery blow up. Cross my fingers that it doesn't happen today on camera. If it does, it'll be a great video. <laughs> All right, so this is the NAND. 
And I already checked the serial number. It actually is a 32 gig NAND. And well, let's discuss that later. But first thing is I mark the orientation. So this dot will go to here. So with my replacement NAND, which I do have here already, which is, I'm just gonna upgrade it. Uh, I have really no use for these NANDs, so might as well use them. And the dot will go like this, so it'll go like that. All right, so to clear underfill on iPads, I go about 250, 260. I'm never too strict on the temperatures. Um, you know, when I have to manually put it and it just clean underfill. So I shoot for 250, but if it lands on 260, then oh well. You know, and then, and then this is my station. Keep in mind, you know, my station is not calibrated. You know, my 250 might not be the same as your 250. So, you know, play with your temperature, see how things work. You know, essentially, if something is running too hot and, you know, things melt really fast, then you know you're too hot, your temperature is too hot. If, uh, you know, you use the same temperatures I'm using, but you see my IC, like on another video, comes off in, you know, 30 seconds where you're like two minutes and it's not coming off, then obviously your station is running too cold. So you do have to learn to adapt to your specific station. Uh, there's, there's no, you can calibrate it, but it's just going through that process is very tedious. And I just adjust my temperature so they work with how I like it. So use my temperatures as reference, at least as a starting point, and then just go from there. Either increase it or lower it or keep it the same. And there's a lot of underfill in this one. All right, before I rotate it, let me just go to the top side now. Now this repair does require the JCP7. Now, technically, you can possibly get away with using the purple mode, uh, like P10 or something, although I never tried it for like an error nine situation. I don't know if you can read the original uh, NAND data. You do have to read the original NAND even though we're replacing it and in theory it has failed. Uh, the sysconfig data which is basically a serial number, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, kind of the configuration uh, is still readable. So I forgot who told me but basically error 9 is uh, some data inside, like a very specific section of the NAND got corrupted and failed. And usually it happens after battery replacement. And I do see this has a replacement battery, so that's probably the story. You replace the battery, the device started boot looping, and eventually it ended up with error nine. So I think what happens is when a battery is dead flat and you plug it into a device, it might cause NAND corruption. So always be careful when installing batteries. Check it that it's not flat, that it has a charge. Otherwise you're risking your customer data because you cannot get data from an error nine. From my understanding, not even the forensic guys from the ones I've asked. So no amount of money is gonna be able to recover your data so this is just for repair. So all data will lost will be lost, but you at least you have your functioning device. Plus make sure you know your iCloud info. We do have to restore it. Alright, let me clear out underfill. So I just noticed my camera on the bottom left was not, was probably uh, not a, uh, pointing in the right direction. So I apologize about that. You should be able to see better now, but essentially nothing's changed from what I'm doing. I'm just applying hot air at lower temp so I could soften that underfill and be able to clear this out. 
Essentially we want to get all the underfill that's stuck to the side of the NAND so that we can lift it without taking all the components with it. And look at that, it actually says here 32G, which means 32 gig NAND. So we're going to upgrade it and there's no negative repercussions to upgrading NAND, everything fully functions after. So that's that's pretty cool. Hopefully the customer appreciates that. If not, oh well, I just need to get rid of these NANDs. You know, these jobs are becoming uh, more rare, more rare being that these are older. And most people are not willing to pay for repairing these. But when there is someone that wants to pay, I have the NANDs for them. So this is the same NAND as an iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 7 Plus, uh, iPad 5, iPad 6, iPad 7, not iPad 8, uh, not iPhone 8. So I'm just clearing some other chunks of underfill here, just in case. All right, let's just go with that. All right, so now we gotta pop off this NAND. This is the fun part. We gotta remove it without damaging the pads underneath. All right, let's get it uh, perfectly in view. I'm gonna use 60% air. Let's do 40. 410 Celsius, 60% air. I do see one little spot here that's kind of clear. So I'm gonna, oops, you guys can see that. I'm gonna use this spot here to try to scoop up the chip. So you guys can see kind of what that, I'm just going really fast circles, gently pry up. I'm using a double seven hook, which I will link down below. I'll also link to the programmers, uh, basically everything I use in this video. If there's anything I didn't, I left out, just let me know in the comments. There you go, as you can see the NAND is moving. It's out. The nice thing about this board is how far away anything else is near it, so I don't have to worry about uh, damaging anything. And while the board is still hot, I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna go back down to 260-ish and use my tweezers to clear out the underfill from underneath. We do have to prep this area, so I might as well do it now while the board is still burning hot from the previous NAND removal. I like to use my tweezers because I already have them here. They're not sharp, so it doesn't scratch the board. And it works. I had one guy comment all mad that I'm not supposed to use tweezers for this, but uh, too bad. My tools, my choice. All right, uh, I think I left some over here. So I'm gonna use my hook tool because I have a better angle to reach. Although the hook tool does scratch the board, so I avoid using it when necessary. I'm gonna clear out this area here. And it doesn't have to get perfect because we're gonna come in with the iron and I should get the, la the rest of it. All right. All 
Let's supply some flux. Some solder to flatten out all the pads. Now, if you did this and you ripped some pads, then I wish you good luck. Um, you know, you should have practiced or added more heat or something. You do have to look at the ZXW and see what pads they are. Try to figure out, are they NC, are they ground, or the actual, an actual line that needs to be restored by running jumpers or rebuilding or something. So, no, I've, a few years ago, I got a, I got a big batch of, like, I was like 30 iPhones, and pretty much all of them were Air 9 NAND, so I did a bunch of NAND repairs, and then separately I had someone else give me like 20 iPads to unlock that requires NAND removal and Wi-Fi replacement and stuff. So I got a ton of experience in a very short amount of time. <laughs> I was essentially forced into that position. Um, well, not, you know, by choice, not forced. But just circumstances ended up that I somehow got a ton of experience and essentially now doing NANDs is like nothing where other people I, I see kind of hesitant or very, uh, I don't know. But it is a fun job and it is pretty easy once you know all the steps. Once you do like 50 of these, it's, it's like nothing. All right, uh, there's still some underfill left. Let me just clear out the last specs. All right. Almost there. Uh, there's one pad that's not flat, but that's good. I mean, these it's very forgiving with uh, with these, so I'm just gonna leave it. You know, the pads are very far away. Uh, the chip is really large, so not an issue. So next is this is the NAND I pulled. I gotta prep it for the programmer. If you put it like this, it might not read. So what I like to do is just prep all the pads, essentially run my iron over all of them so that there's a surface, a clean surface for the programmer pins to make contact with. Otherwise it could be you know, underfill or some, something in the way. Now if you rip pads from here, then it's a little trickier because you might not be able to repair it easily. And now you've, lost your chance to read the original NAND to recover the sysconfig data, which there is a way to recover it on devices with IMEIs. Devices without IMEIs, like iPad Wi-Fi versions, uh, there's no way to recover it other than writing a new serial number, a clean serial number, uh, which you'll need a source, um, which is a whole other topic that I'm not going to cover right now, but just for your reference. So this is the programmer we're going to use, the JCP7. This supports this style of NAND, like the one we removed. This is the one where, I, I forget the name, uh, BGA70? But essentially, it has, uh, here, let's go into the scope really quick. Uh, essentially, it has, you know, two rows of large pads. There is... Uh, one row here with two, and then the rest is small. Um, here's another one. So visually, you should be able to uh, recognize it right away. Large pads, two small ones, and then a bunch of small ones. Um, I don't have, yeah, I don't have any other NANDs here to show you, but this one's for iPhone uh, 6S. I have already mentioned in the video earlier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this into the programmer. Now remember there's the orientation dots. The programmer will have something like that too. 
So I just mark in a giant blue marker. That way I don't have to struggle trying to find it. Make sure it's sitting uh, correctly in here. Make sure it's not offset or whatever. It's fully seated, it's flush, and then lock it in. Then you plug this into your PC using a lightning cable. And it should start flashing. And then we go to the computer. Let's, uh, actually, let's close this. Let's bring up the JC Repair Assistant software, which should come up any second now. All right, and then what you do is you go to this first button for the JCP7. Uh, you click refresh. This will scan for COM ports and whatever COM port your device is on. I only have one COM port, which is COM20. So let's select that and then click connect. And if the NAND is good, it should detect it and read it. And Uh oh, no disk error detected. All right, so it's not reading the NAND query again. All right, so let's pop. I'm going to pop it out. It should read it because it, it got to 20%. If and it gave error 9, not error 4014. So a little bit of alcohol, wipe it down. I might have to, I might wick it flat if this doesn't work. So pop it back in, lock it in, and this should automatically read it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's taking a long time. This is definitely going to not read. All right, let's see what happens. Yep, it's not reading. Um, let me click refresh. That basically disconnects. Click connect. All right, port open. It should do something. All right, just for reference, let me remove that NAND. I'm gonna put in the replacement NAND I'm gonna use so you guys can see exactly what should happen. Plus, for your sanity check. Oops, sorry about that. All right, I have it sitting flush in there. Lock it in, and you'll see the difference here. Assuming, assuming my programmer didn't just die on me. There you go, see, I read it, it says something, query. I'm able to read uh, data here, so. Yeah, so the programmer is good. Uh, let's pop this one back out. Put the... You know what, let's, let's wick this flat. Maybe just something with these solder balls or something. Sometimes I just, I do be like that. All right. I'm going to Get flats. All right, clean it really well. All right, this looks very clean. Let's go back to the programmer. This goes in this direction. All right. So right now the programmer is flashing, meaning it's trying to read. And how do I click? All right, let me clear that. I cleared, essentially wiped the old data that was there on the screen so it doesn't confuse us. Um, one thing you notice is this thing's flashing, meaning it's trying to read it. Uh, if we go back, well, there's nothing displaying here yet. Yeah, this thing is going to fail. You know what, I'm gonna try, yeah, no disk. 
That's not good. Uh, all right, so this is a situation where we, where we can't source the, we basically need the serial number, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth in order to activate the device, but we can't. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'll have to source my own clean serial number and then um, write that. So right now I have the good NAND, the replacement, that is 128 gig, which is, and at the end is really 125, but whatever. Um, what I'm gonna do is we have an iPad 7, which is a 2019 version. I'm gonna write, I'm actually format it first. I'm gonna format, yes. So essentially that wipes it. And then since I have iPad 7 2019 here, I'm gonna click write sysconfig. This essentially fills in generic uh, data onto the device. We also have, it also unlocked Wi-Fi automatically. Essentially, um, you know, that way Wi-Fi is not grayed out. Uh, we're gonna query, right? There's some generic data here. And I'm gonna change this to USA region. Uh, this iPad is actually rose gold. But outside of that, everything else doesn't matter. We're gonna write. So we're gonna select all to all this and we're gonna write it to the iPad or to, this, to the replacement NAND. We're gonna query and it's still there. All right, so now the NAND is programmed for iPad 7, a rose gold version. It has some bogus serial number, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But really the goal is to make sure it can restore and try to activate. It's not gonna activate, but that's a separate issue which we'll deal with after. So this is the 128 gig NAND. Actually, it's in rough shape, so let me first clean it up by running over all the pads. Essentially, process of soldering on all of them cleans them up as well. All right, and this knife tip is amazing because it also cleans any old underfill. All right, and then we're gonna wick this down so we could reball it properly. It actually doesn't have to be perfect. By the way, I highly recommend the Action Soldering Iron as you can see how effective it is throughout this whole video. Um, the knife tip is just amazing. It's essentially a JBC clone uh, at a fraction of the price, right? I'm gonna clean off the sides of the NAND so we don't have all this extra underfill junk. All right, so now that we reball this, let me get a stencil. So I'm gonna use this Mechanic 3D stencil that has all the NANDs. So this is where I was saying, um, you know, there's different styles. So this is the latest one, this is the older one, this is kind of like the middle one. And we're working with the middle one. All right. And it's 3D, so it helps keep it in line. I already have some paste here. Let me know if you guys want me to make a separate video on just reballing. This is a very fundamental technique that if you're gonna do any micro soldering, you have to master. If you don't know how to reball, then you shouldn't be micro soldering on customers' devices. Well, I mean, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. Definitely should practice and master this skill. It will bring you a lot of money because there's a lot of repairs that require it. So I've applied. There's some pads here that look a little, not dry, but 
a little empty. All right, let's, let's just do it now. So using curved tweezers, I'm gonna use 350, a little higher than usual for my reballing attempt, just because the NAND is much larger and it's very, uh, this requires more, I found, more heat. So just heat in circles. And I always reball on a, a clean cloth kind of surface. It makes it so the chip kind of sinks down into it and makes reballing so much easier. The chip doesn't move around. The stencil lays flat. There's a lot of uh, benefits to that. All right, so the NAND is now reballed. Let's go ahead and install it on the board. Visually, it looks like it's uneven, but this should work. Worst case, if you're ever not sure if it's even or not, you could also do this. So first clean it. Always work on a clean stencil. Always clean your stencil right after you use it. Cause that's when it's hot and it's much easier to deal with than once it's cold. Cause then you'll probably have to reheat it anyway. A lot of lint from the lint free cloth. You know, that's what happens when you buy your supplies off Amazon. All right, if you're not sure, run your blade flat. And you can see if you shave off some, but not others, that means it was uneven. But in this case, you know what? And this, like the bottom row is very uneven. So let me, my paste, solder paste was low and kind of dry. So let me scoop up some, a little more to use. And I'm just gonna reball over the existing solder balls. And essentially, you know, solder balls are taking up space in those holes. So, you know, it'll only get enough paste in there than it, than it needs so that they all essentially end up being the same volume of solder in there. So I've repasted it. Now, this just give us a more uniform solder balls. You know, the ones with the holes with the smaller solder balls will get more paste. The ones with the bigger solder balls will get less paste. And at the end, it evens out. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know down in the comments below if it makes sense. Uh, type of one in the comments if it makes sense. I'm going to be seeing a bunch of ones and not even remember what I said. So that'll be fun. I do read every single comment and reply to every single one. So make sure you guys utilize the comment section if you have any questions. All right, and then we can come back and shave off the top again. And now you'll see all they all shave the same amount and look the same, then for sure they're even now. Look at that. Now technically you can just leave it like this or you can just reflow it. It doesn't really matter. All right, let's clean this off. Oh, this is clean enough. All right. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm, it's gonna reflow in the solder job. Where's my large tweezers? So you can see, hopefully, maybe not. 
All right, this should be good. Good enough for the job. You know what? Let me clean it a little bit. Real quick. Oops. All right. Actually, it's kind of dirty down here, so let me wipe this down. I don't want the back of the iPad to be full of flux and alcohol. So then I'll have to clean it. All right, some flux. The dot on the bottom right. To match that X I scratched out. All right, so I'm gonna use a little lower temp than usual just to see what happens and then I can increase the temp if necessary. So just heat in circles, let this flux underneath spread around. Eventually the soldered balls on the chip will melt and combine with the solder pads on the board and create a connection that allows the electricity to flow through. When there's electricity, we get power, we get data, and we get a working iPad. All right, so I'm gonna bump the chip and see how this snap back into place. So this should be soldered on and then give it a few seconds before you touch it. I'm going to use my uh, foam swab here to kind of wipe stuff down. I don't want a bunch of flux everywhere. Let me actually get my lint-free cloth as well that has a little more absorbing power. All right, uh, yeah, there's gonna be flux underneath. Oh well, all right, let's give it a try. All right, so I'm gonna pull out the tool. I'm gonna get my battery screw in place. And we're gonna plug this into the computer. And it should boot into DFU mode instantly because it has a new NAND. Um, so let's see what happens. So I'm gonna unplug my programmer. I'm actually gonna close the JC software, uh, which I, ha I still had open. I'm going to instead open 3U tools. So let me plug this in. Look at that, instantly into DFU mode. So, so far so good. We're gonna go and just do, let's do iTunes flash because we wanna see if we get any error codes. Quick flash, so this is a restore, this is a full wipe. It's a new NAND, so we gotta do that. You cannot update it. And essentially, let me change the color to maybe a green. So essentially, we're just gonna let it try to restore. If it makes it past the last point of failure, which was around 20%. Actually, let me see, let me pull up the, let's take a look at the iPad here on the bottom uh, right. We want to, all right, we get Apple logo, so that's good. It's a good sign, we didn't break anything. And we're at, now keep in mind that Percentage here on 3U tools and not the same on iTunes Flash versus, versus Easy Flash. All right, so you can see the loading bar. So before on the original bad NAND, we were getting a loading bar and somewhere around this point is when it would fail. Now the question is, does it fail do we get actual loading? Oh, look at that progress bar. And it looks like this is fixed. 
except the whole serial number thing. So let me see if I could source one right now, literally as we record this. You know what? Let's, let's just record the screen until it finishes. I'll fast forward. Here at the end of the restore process, you can see the progress bar is almost there. Here on the bottom right, it says 98%. So let's see if it successfully completes. If it does and we get to the hello screen, that means we're almost done. So if you do need a new serial number for like these cases, where you have a Wi-Fi iPad and you cannot get the original serial number Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, then you have to get a new set that is clean that can be used and that's going to cost you some money. Um, I get them from Wayne Bonici, so the same guy who does the panic log analyzer tool. You can reach out to him, to him through there. Um, I'll ask him if he wants me to link his info publicly, <laughs> but um, probably his email is probably the best way. All right, so success and Yeah, it looks like it went through on this side of things. We do see that uh, the iPad is here. It's a 2019 iPad. We obviously won't be able to activate it because we have a junk um, serial number. But when you click activate here on 3U tools, you come on this screen and there you go, failed. But at least we got the iPad to this screen. So now what I'm gonna do is so let's wait for this iPad to boot to the home screen so I can show you guys that it actually works. All right, here we go. So the iPad is working. All right, touch works. One thing about when you write, um, replace the NAND, make sure the rotation works. Sometimes if the configuration is wrong on the NAND, it will be backwards or sometimes you get weird colors and stuff. So. Here you go. So now I did just get the new serial number for uh, for this iPad so we can activate it, being that we, there's no way for us to recover the original. So I'm gonna use the JCP13. We're gonna use purple mode to reconfigure the serial number. That way I don't have to desolder it. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in. So USB-C into the D, uh, P13 and then out from the P13 to the iPad. Um, and then you're gonna use, we're gonna force it into DFU mode. So press, hold on, let me, let me cut the plastic around the home button that way I can feel that I'm clicking it. I really hate this. And this video is longer than I expected <laughs> in that we ran into some unexpected issues. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ten let go of power but keep holding home and of course home button is sinking in and all right so you can see here my computer has detected in dfu mode which is perfect we don't need three tools right now we need the jc repair system again and this ipad needs a new home button to be seated All right, so we're gonna go back to basically where we were, except this time we want to connect to the P13. So instead of a COM port, we get now P13, connect. And then it says here, it has detected the iPad 7 in DFU mode. Here on the left, you wanna put it into purple mode. You click that button. You'll see here on the iPad, it'll eventually get some bright colored screen. It doesn't necessarily have to be purple, but just wait for this process to complete. And then we should be able to read the NAND just like we did through the JCP7. So essentially purple mode allows us to program a NAND 
via USB without touching any soldering. And there you go. I wonder if you guys can see, but it's a very dim purple. All right, so I'm going to query. Look at that. We have all the bogus information we filled in. And then here I have the uh, serial number, which we're going to paste in here. Wi Fi, copy, paste in the Wi Fi field. And then Bluetooth should automatically fit in, fill in. Sometimes it's just a plus one of the Wi Fi but not always, so I'm just gonna paste it just in case. And I'm just gonna write all this. So I'm gonna write, now it has these three pieces of information that are the correct, uh, just, just to be sure. Wi-Fi is unlocked, just to be sure, and that's it. So now that we've programmed the NAND via USB using JCP13 in purple mode, I'm now gonna exit purple by clicking here. And there you go, you see back to the Apple logo. Actually, we're gonna want to go back to 3D tools. We're gonna plug this back in to the computer. And I'm pretty sure we need to restore it one more time, which is annoying, but let's, let's see. Oh, let me unplug it, plug it back in. All right, so now here, the serial number you see is changed. I didn't look at it before, but I'm sure it was the uh, JCX, 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 or whatever. So let's see, let's try to activate it. I don't know if this is gonna work. Probably not. No. All right, so let's restore it one more time now with the correct serial number info, quick flash, doesn't really matter. The goal is to just restore it. So let's just let this complete and we'll be back. All right, so as successfully restored again, we're going to go back to this page and see if it activates. In theory, the serial number I got is good. It should activate and we'll have a fully functional iPad 7. And please, <laughs> should we get a green check mark, not some red text? Come on, I spent a lot of time on this. And it is taking forever. Man, the suspense. <laughs> All right, Apple, stop messing with me. I should activate. Okay, this is not normal. It should not take this long, but I don't know, maybe Apple servers. Because basically what happens is, this device checks in with Apple and says, here's my credentials, serial number, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and probably some other data. And then Apple, oh, there it goes. <laughs> and then Apple checks their side, like, okay, this is a le legit device. Let's allow this device onto our ecosystem, basically. And we have a clean serial number, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth on this device, and it has activated. So what that means is we'll now be able to set this up. All right, low battery. English, United States of America. And we'll get this set up. All right. It's spinning right now, so I don't know what's going on. It's taking forever, but every once in a while, I just, some devices act like this. Also, I guess while this is loading, one thing I do want to show you here on 3 tools is if you click on view verification report. You can see how the original was 32 and now we're 128. And it says uh, it's been upgraded uh, the battery has been replaced, the rear camera uh, was replaced, <laughs> the front camera was replaced, touch ID module may have been changed. Why for sure? Oh, there it goes. All right, all right, so finally, we're back. 
So let's see if anything doesn't work. Uh, Wi-Fi, Pixel Networks, Bluetooth is not grayed out. Uh, let's go to, oops, no, cancel. Let's go to About. Uh, you can see here it is at 128 gigs and fully functional. Uh, let's see, does Touch ID work? I don't know if this has an original. Oh, yeah, it does. Look at that. So yeah, everything is functional. Let's check the cameras. Oops. I don't still care about that. So camera works. Selfie cam works. So, yeah, it's gonna be a happy customer, fully functional. Now this is using a new replacement serial number from a unknown source. So the problem with these is that if you do replace a serial number, there's a chance it can relock. Um, it can basically be iCloud locked after you restore it. So if you wipe it and you do a restore, it can lock possibly. So I don't recommend if you ever end up contacting Wayne Bonici for a new serial number for your iPad where you lost the original, uh, you're unable to read the original sysconfig and it's a Wi-Fi model. Um, which there's no way to recover it. Well, actually, there might be a way with the special programmer and all this, but I don't have that, so this is the other way. Um, it might be, there might be a chance it can relock, so definitely tell the customer, like, hey, this, don't restore it. You can update it, no problem, and just restore. It might lock because sometimes these serial numbers are recycled and sold to many different people, and many different people activate at the same time, and it can lock. But all the functions will work, uh, so there you go. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video. It was actually longer than expected, but at least you saw how to use the JCP7, how to use the JCP13 and purple mode, and how to remove NAN, reball, all that good stuff. So if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Down below, I will link to how to contact me if you have an iPad that needs a repair. Also, I do iPhones, Samsungs, and a lot of data recovery as well. So just reach out to me and I'll tell you if I can fix it and a quote and all that. Uh, I will also link down below all my different tools that I use in today's video. I will link to my locals community. So if you wanna be able to support the channel, you can sign up to be a supporter on there. I post there regularly about the different repairs I'm doing, you know, step-by-step -step process of what I did to repair it. Also, if you, another way to support the channel is to buy a t-shirt, which I will also link down below. I have a lot of cool designs that you can purchase. And if you're a technician, these are perfect for you guys. And lastly, we do have Lewis Frostman who has a repair wiki. It is a crowdsourced website where people can upload solutions to many different problems. And we're looking for contributors that we can pay to create high quality guides. These are repair guides that kind of walk you through step by step of a solution. So imagine if you can watch this video and type out everything about it, you know, step by step so that if someone runs into this issue, they don't have to watch this, you know, however long this video is, you know, whether it's one hour, two hours, three hours, they can just read the text on the process, follow, follow them and be able to repair devices. Basically, the idea is that if we, pre if we create more repair guides for people to have access to, that creates a bigger market for repairability. You know, there might be shops out there who can't do these type of repairs because they just don't know the solutions. They don't have a place to go to to look this up. And if there's a repair wiki there that they can reference, then they'll get more repairs done, which means more happy customers. More happy customers will spread the word about hey, Apple says my device was not repairable, but I took it to this guy or to this shop and they were able to repair it. And then they, they might start changing the, the mindset of customers who might not know about this. So that's the goal with the repair wiki. And if you can create guides, it doesn't have to be your original solution either. It just, we just need solutions documented, written up and an easy way for someone to be able to follow and uh, you know, confirm that this is the solution they need for their uh, repair. So reach out to me if you want to get paid to generate these guides. We're looking for contributors. So if you want to see another iPad 7 video where I attempt to repair, uh, actually I attempt to reball a CPU, I will link it here. 
it is a failed attempt but at least you see me struggle <laughs> appreciate all you guys who stuck here till the end i'll see you guys on the next one